Hello there YouTube, it is Saint. I hope you're doing well. I have decided today, after uh, a, an evening of invading, that I am in need of um, better co-invaders, better people invading uh, alongside me here in Elden Ring, um, especially up and around uh, anything like at meta level or beyond. This build that you're seeing here is level 140. Um, I have had so many invasions this evening that were taunters tongued duos. Uh, so two invaders versus host and phantom. And uh, they just were mostly bad. And it drove me crazy. It drives me a little crazy. You know? Um, I, I have recorded some of it so that you can see. And we're going to work on... Uh, you know, making people better invaders. So, you know, keep in mind that this this type of uh, commentary is more designed for newer players than it is experienced players, but, you know, maybe if you're experienced, you can watch the video. Maybe you'll learn something that you didn't know about, uh, at, you know, over in the pretty pictures. Just look at the pretty pictures, you know, while I talk. If you know somebody who, like, wants to get better at invading or something, maybe you can send them this. Uh, the first thing, first and foremost, is take advantage of the opportunities you have. If you're new to PvP and you don't know a lot about it, take advantage of the opportunities you, opportunities that you have to play uh, against a single player, against one person. And the reason this is important is because let's say, you know, you go in the lab and you cook up this insanely powerful build that is capable of, you know, winning against multiple players, but you don't know how to fight a person just one-on-one, -on -one, right? So you, you beat the two phantoms with your build, you know, now it's just the host all by himself, all alone. You should be, um, you should be good enough to hold your own against a solo host. So the best place to learn uh, you know, this type of thing is in the arena or, you know, set up some duels with people, you know, like I, I'm sure there's Reddit and whatever else, you know, ways for you to set up some duels or just as you invade, take the opportunity to pay attention and try and learn um, how to fight one-on-one -on -one because that's important for an invader. That's your best case scenario. The best case scenario for an invader is that you get, uh, you know, the host by themselves, and like that's when you can, that's when you can win the invasion, right? You gotta beat the host. That's the, that's the whole gist of it. Now, a lot of people like myself who are looking to invade, if I invade a solo host, I'm not necessarily like pumped up about it. Um, I prefer fighting with multiple people, but I had some fun when, you know, not not all duels are, are boring and bad or whatever. Um, I have, I've had some fun ones. I've included them in this video here with this, uh, with this build. Um, and yeah, it, it's just a nice way for you to get accustomed to the way that people play because people will play very similarly. Um, across uh, different players. If they're, if two players are using the same weapon, there is a good chance that both of those players are going to play that weapon in a very similar fashion, regardless of how much uh, experience they have or, or how familiar they are with the game. Um, that sort of meta sort of works itself out. That's what meta is. Um, but you can learn a lot from one player and take that from one invasion or one duel and you can take that into your next encounter. And so anytime you have a chance, anytime you have an opportunity, you should definitely take advantage of those 1v1s. Okay, now let's move on to the next thing and that is be aware of your surroundings. Know what's going on. Know what's near you. Know what's happening. Um, you have this bright shiny compass on your screen um, and it's pointing you directly towards the person you're trying to kill. Uh, so, you know, use that. Um, take a look at what's happening. Do
Do you invade solo people, typically? No, you don't. So always assume that even if someone looks like they're solo, assume that they're not. Because they probably aren't. Right? That's just logic. And we love logic here at SaintRiot.com. Um, so they want me to go up the ladder. So what do I do? Not the thing they want. I do anything except for the thing that they want. So using the Phantom for or the Phantom Bloody Finger is bugged. You know, everybody's been over this. We're aware of it. However, at level 140, I don't really care if I quote unquote unscale a Phantom at that level. Uh, that's fine. I don't. I don't mind because you know they've got a plus 25 weapon. They they already had one. I, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't scaled down before, so it's fine that they that they have that. But just don't do the thing that they want you to do. If you see people and they're just standing there next to a ladder or an elevator or whatever, like, just don't do the thing that they want you to do. This is, oh my god, this infuriated me. This is actually why I'm making this video, is this invasion right here. So this host is on this chain. I am aware that you'd never invade a solo host, right? Not typically. So I know there's a phantom here, and I look and I see that this person on this chain is by themselves, which means there is somebody waiting to spring a trap on me. Wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you just know that that's what they wanted to do, right? And that's what they're doing, okay? This is what they are doing. They are ganking, and they are, you know, just waiting for invaders to show up. This entire level is dead, and they cannot make progress beyond that point without sending that phantom home. They are doing this on purpose. So I run back, I'm looking, I was gonna run to the lobsters, but they weren't following me. Another invader shows up. So I go back to help the other invader. This is uh, going to bite me in the ass because my other invader has gravy for brains. Gravy for brains, that's right. And if you want to say, oh, say, how could they know? Then you have guacamole brains. Your brains are only slightly more delicious. I stopped eating animals, because like pigs and cows, because I was like, ah, too close to sentient for my liking. I don't think I want to eat those things anymore. I would eat this person. That's how stupid they are. They have the mind of a shrimp or a, you know, a crab. Like, I wouldn't give a shit. I would eat this human being, all right? So now that I'm here, and I've come and there's a second invader, they're not ganking because they want to appear as if they weren't ganking so that they can have their 1v, you know, 1v2 advantage back. So I'm trying to help this other invader and uh, my kindness will be rewarded um, uh, just, you know, uh, in, in gravy brained style here. And, um, and this is the reason right here. This is the uh, exact reason that I made this video uh, was because of this encounter. It, there, there's another one a little later on that also just drove me crazy. Okay, so we get rid of the Phantom, who was probably obscenely overleveled. Um, maybe not obscenely, but they were overleveled. Now, that host is attacking you because he knows he's guilty. He expects the 2v1 because that's what he deserves. I'm saying this to my other invader. But Saint, how could he have known? How could he have known? He's going to know. He's going to know. All it takes is like two brain cells to rub together. And you could figure out like, oh, there's two of them here and there was already an invader here. And so it, it stands to reason that that other invader was getting ganked. This invader here decides that I'm not honorable and starts trying to kill me uh, with the host, which is just absolutely brilliant and watch as he honor bows the phantom i'm sorry watch as he honor bows the host immediately takes off running back to the grace to resummon his phantom so now that dude's gonna get ganked to death assume they're ganking is what this one comes down to i promise you no invader is going to be that mad if you ruin a, an honorable 1v1 duel compared to how mad you will make your fellow invaders if you let them get ganked to death because you were trying to be quote unquote honorable it's, it's absurd and stupid, don't do it. If you are an invader and there's a second invader in the world with you, just assume that that invader has had 
uh, the worst possible experience from the two people that he has invaded. Just assume that. Because if you assume anything other than that, you run the risk of being wrong and basically siding with the wrong team. And that is absolutely uh, infuriating. This invasion right here, this has been going on for a minute. 50% HP just gone off of a single whatever spell that is that that person is casting. Night Comet, I think. You have to be aware of that. Like, I'm losing 50% of my health. That person was losing like 80% of theirs from a single cast. The first time that hits you and you survive, you have to become aware of that. You have to. These two would not make any progress. All they wanted to do was just stand around uh, and, and, you know, just wait for the invader to walk directly into this person who will only cast this one spell over and over again. It's all they did. It's all they would ever do is that one spell uh, while their friend with a colossal sword backs them up. Any two invaders, any two invaders who are smart enough to have a driver's license, any two invaders who are, you know, smart enough um, that a court has said, no, you can probably take care of yourself, should be able to beat these two. But unfortunately, that is just not the case. I, I just need someone with, like, a pulse and just a fraction of some sort of, like, thought behind their eyes. That's all I need, just to keep one person busy. You know, that's all I'm looking for. I can't have that. You know, that's how bad it is. <laughs> that's how bad it is. The other invader gets hit for 80% of their health off of a single spell and makes no adjustment to their plays uh, whatsoever at all. Now that I have another invader, and keep in mind, keep in mind, these are the fun gankers, okay? These are the fun ones. The unfun ones would turn the tongue off. So, while this is quite frustrating, um, uh, that was my fault for not waiting for this other invader, but it wouldn't have mattered because look at them. I mean, they just instantly died. Just instantly. So, I asked my friend Makuta, I'm like, hey, uh, do you want to come invade here? And Makuta hops on. And now I have someone who invades that I know understands the game. And, you know, this is now going to be uh, a much more manageable situation. Look at how much easier this is. And I'm not, like, sugarcoating this. Uh, Maku I've, I've told Makuta, like, yeah, they just spam Shadow Comet or whatever. But maybe I didn't do a good enough job of preparing Makuta for this uh, particular <laughs> brand of um, absolute damage because the damage that this person does is just absolutely obscene and it doesn't matter if someone tells you like hey this person is going to do a lot of damage um, until you see it and then you realize like okay no that is that is a lot of damage so uh, Makuta Makuta died, we ran away for a minute, and we come back, and, you know, now Makuta knows what to expect, so, it's, it's, yeah, like, it's just automatic, and this is how it should be. These two players are not very experienced, but that's, all it takes is two players, and now you're dangerous. I say this all the time, there is nothing more quote-unquote meta than having a friend. Just have a friend, and any build you want becomes really good now. That's all you need, is to just, you know, summon someone. And, you know, now you can... Now you can, uh... You can use any build you want, and it'll be OP. So, yeah, Makuta bites the dust, gets back in, has Barrier of Gold, and, yeah, this is so much easier once Makuta knows what to expect. Um, this is a thing that you will see co-invaders do a lot. 
don't run in and try and help me fight the person I'm fighting. Um, unless you can get like a sneaky hit and run. But don't try and gank as invaders. Like, two invaders should be fighting different people the whole time. Maybe, maybe you do a little bit of tag team action where, you know, you hit somebody that they were hitting, you know, uh, and vice versa. You hit somebody that they're hitting, they hit somebody that you're hitting. But then it's right back to where you were, you know? Two really good invaders who understand each other and play well together can tag team off of each other, you know, fantastic. But for the most part, keep in mind that the reason ganking is easy is because these two, the host and the phantom, they can't hit each other. Me and you, to two invaders, we can hit each other, right? So we have to be careful with how we attack. Notice how we're both using spears at this point. We're both using spears because this person is just going to roll away and throw out some spells whenever they get a chance to. And we want attacks that have like pinpoint accuracy so we're not hitting each other uh, any more than we have to. It doesn't take a, a brain genius to figure out how to make two invaders hit each other. It's not hard to figure out how to make two invaders hit each other. You just stay kind of close to both of them and they'll hit each other. That's why you don't want to be swinging a colossal sword around when you're trying to kill the same person. And that's what ends up happening when two invaders try and team up on one person. Now, if, if, if there are two invaders and there's a blue and that's the only person either of you can see, yeah, tag team. Just beat the absolute hell out of them together. But if there's a host and a phantom and they're both present, then there's no reason for two invaders to both be attacking the same person. All you're doing is giving the other person you're not, you know, dealing with a chance to do something that's going to do some serious damage when neither of you are looking at them. We've all been hit with Moon Veil or whatever, um, you know, when we've had our back turned. We've all experienced that. We've all done it. But um, it, it doesn't... You know, like, it doesn't have to be that way if you have a second invader. The two the two gankers, the host and the phantom, they can't hit each other, like I said. So they're going to try and do tag team stuff. They're going to switch off one person's fighting one person and then switches to the other. They're going to do that stuff, and they can do it for free. They can't be punished for it because they don't have friendly fire. But invaders do, so you have to play accordingly. You have to play like you do have friendly fire. This is another great example of uh, just being absolutely failed um, by your typical co-invaders. This is a player who is using like a meta setup with dual lances, and they have a they have a phantom summoned up here who ended up being level 401. So, but look at this player. You see them using dual lances and you think, oh no, this is they're using the meta. They know what the meta is. And it's like, that's true, but they're still garbage. This happens more often than it doesn't. Just because a player has good equipment on doesn't mean they understand why it's good or what makes it good. This player is not good. They, they just use good stuff, you know? They watch a YouTube video or they watch a Twitch stream and they see what that person's using and like mindless automaton they just equip it and think that they are that person they think they're on the team he thinks he's him right don't be afraid of these people like if they were any good they wouldn't be ganking you know what i'm saying you will occasionally very rarely run into like competent gankers and in a situation like that you know just kind of sucks but you gotta you know it is what it is but those are so few and far between. Most of the time when you see a player who just has good equipment on, it doesn't mean they're any good. They just watch someone who is probably good. That's it. So I'm waiting here. Another invader shows up. And if, if you see someone with a shield out, especially a shield that can parry, and they go for a parry and they miss and then they go for an they are going to go for the parry 
over and over and over again. Alright? That person just parried twice, three times, four times. You have got to pay attention. You have got to see that coming. My uh, ancient lightning spear just did not lock on to the person I wanted it to lock on to. Um, you know, rest in peace. But same duo, and we have another invader here, but they're getting killed. This phantom, using uh, an S-stock, it's a very good weapon, but that doesn't make him a good player. It just makes him someone who has watched good players, you know? Um, we're going to switch to a spear to challenge that. We have to two-hand that spear on this build, um, but that's no big deal. We'll, we'll two-hand the spear. So they kill the other invader. I use the finger. I end up right back in the same room, but they didn't know that that was going to happen. So yeah, like I'll make these trades with this person. Uh, they made that trade two times more than any good player would have made. You know? A good player would have made that trade once and immediately been like, yeah, this is not worth it. Okay, I'm sorry. I have s I've said so much over the course of this video. Here's another big thing you can do. Learn to split people up. And, and for the love of God, don't cast spells on an elevator that have any sort of startup uh, against a guy two-handing a big spear. That's, that's dumb. Don't do that. Anyway, I hope you've been able to absorb some of this information. Split your people up. Don't try and gank the same person with your other invaders. And learn to do some 1v1s. And uh, hopefully that has helped. I'll see you guys next time. Later, y'all.